do you think that history should be portrayed accurately when it's turned into a drama, either for TV um, or in the cinema? I've been thinking about my recent cinema visit where I went to see Wicked Little Letters, which is set in 1920. It is set in a English country village called Littlehampton, which is in Sussex. So it's just post-war and it looks great. The streets are accurate, um, the hairstyling, the costumes, it looks amazing, it's fantastic. And everybody or at least most of the people who are characters in it are people from history. So if you go to the internet, you can type in, um, you want to know the, 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 the true story behind the film, and it'll take you to a page where you can actually see photographs of the people who were alive at the time and involved in this case and involved in this thing that happened in the 1920s. So it's not like you have to make stuff up. It's very easy to find the true story. And I know that when they dramatise real life events, there are always elements of artistic licence. So for instance, um, one of the characters in it, Rose, in the film, she has a daughter called Nancy. In real life at the time, she didn't have a daughter called Nancy. Her daughter was called Dorothy, and she actually had three children. And she was married to a chap called Bill. And for some reason, they've decided that in this film, Bill has to be a black man. He wasn't. He was white. He came from Sussex. He was the average white working class Joe that you would expect to see in an area like that. So that was intriguing. I didn't understand why they needed to do that. And then one of the other characters is a woman police constable who did exist. She was really there. She was one of the first women police constables. Apparently she was the first women police constable to ride a motorbike and she has a memorial to her in the town where she lived and there's one to her father who was also a police officer. But for some reason they have decided that this woman has to be of Indian origin. Now I don't know the details of where this actress actually comes from, I haven't researched her, but she is of some kind of Asian heritage. So I don't know why they needed to swap her out. They also decided that one of the assistant postmasters, who may or may not have been a real character, I'm not entirely sure, also has to be a black woman. And they decided that the judge for the town, when this thing that happens goes to court, the judge has to be a black man as well. Now, if this was a made-up drama, I wouldn't have thought much about it. If you're not interested in portraying history as it really was, and it's a made-up drama and you've written the script, that's one thing. But this is things that actually happened. Now, whenever I go and see something in the cinema or on the TV that is based in fact, I go and read up on it because there are always massive inconsistencies because it's being made for entertainment and directors and writers and producers, producers will cut corners where things don't fit regardless of their historical accuracy. So when I, I already knew for a fact that there would have been no black and Asian people or Indian people living in Littlehampton in 1920, it just wasn't a thing. 
so it was quite interesting going in to the internet and reading up and finding out other information other things that have been tweaked which you, you know the dropping of a couple of kids from a from a family unit um all that sort of thing doesn't surprise me but when you're swapping out actual physical appearances of people in such a dramatic way I just don't know why it has to be done is this because we have to fill a quota just wondering because what you will have is an awful lot of people will not go away from that film and read up on the actual case there is a book about it you can you can go and read up on the actual facts of the time and read the newspaper articles and look at the pictures of people it was a real thing that really happened but a lot of people won't and you'll probably now have an awful lot of people thinking that Little Hampton in 1920 was this um, very mixed race town it wasn't it was your average 1920s English town it was white people that was it um, Rose is Irish in it and there were lots of Irish people over here at that time and they were looked down upon and treated badly so um, they kind of got that right um, but I just think if you're going to portray history and particularly a history that can be verified you know it's easy to find the proof of what people look like and where they came from and, and all that sort of thing why would you just change that if you were that determined to have a very mixed race cast in something that was historical and based in fact why didn't you just tweak the story and say it was fictional with inspiration from a factual thing I presume it's filling a quota. I presume it's trying to appeal to a a particular mindset, which is not my mindset, which is history should be done accurately. It rarely is on the screen, but it's usually little things that are changed, not you know entire ethnic um, backgrounds for main characters. I just find it very strange. And so, yes, I would imagine there are lots of people now walking around thinking, ooh, wasn't Little Hampton diverse in the 1920s? It wasn't. It was your average English town. It was quite weird, actually. I don't know how well this film has done. It's been out a week. When I went to the cinema last Friday, I always try and go when I think there will be less people in the cinema because I always end up next to the noisy bugger who's got a packet of crisps or can't stop talking or have to keep checking their phone. And that really irritates me when you're in a room with lots of other people who are trying to watch a film. But when I went, I was the only one in the screening, the only person, which is great. It's not the first time I've been to a showing and that's happened. And I tend to find if you wait a week until after something's been out and the main crowd have gone as soon as it opens. And if you go on a weekday morning, like I went Friday morning at 10, you've got, you stand a better chance of getting the place to yourself. And I like that because it meant that I could just kind of laugh like a drain at the at the naughty swearing and all that sort of thing. And that was accurate, or the, the, the swear words in it are accurate. People think that people were very prim and proper back then, but all the swear words were invented back then. There is nothing new under the sun these days. So it was really funny to hear these words coming out of the mouths of very prim and proper looking 1920s people. Um... And I enjoyed it. I know that some people didn't like it. Um, it was pretty obvious from the start what the outcome was going to be. You could you could see who the guilty parties were right from the start. But it didn't matter um, because it was it was a kind of a joyful romp, but slightly ruined by these unnecessary inaccuracies. I mean, maybe they thought that if they portrayed all the characters accurately, that the writers would be considered racist. I mean, God forbid that something might be historically historically accurate. I mean, if I decided to write a, 
a drama about Nelson Mandela and made him white, they'd all freak out, wouldn't they? But you can't do it when it's the other way around. So I thought I'd say that because I know that... I hate to say the word, but woke is still out there. It's one of the reasons that I don't watch the news. I don't let myself get embroiled in trashy celebrity media. And one of the reasons I don't have one of these... I don't usually have these conversations with my mother because she gets on a high horse and you can't stop her um, because she gets really annoyed about it. But I think historical accuracy is important. If you are accurately portraying something that happened in history, something that can be traced and read about in its original form, you should stick to that because... Particularly if your your tagline for the film is, it's based in truth. If you're telling everybody that you've taken this story from history and then you stick it on the screen and you've kind of ripped it apart and turned it into something that it actually wasn't, it's quite deceitful, actually. And I did look at a, a couple of forums about this because I've... It was bugging me and I thought, there must be other people who are making a point about this. And I did read on some forums about it, but it wasn't, it wasn't like a major conversation piece. And I think a lot of that is purely because people are afraid to say what they think. Because if you do, you're thought of as racist. I'm not racist. Historical accuracy is what it is. If I was watching a film that was set historically accurately in, oh goodness, I don't know, let's pick somewhere. Um, Bangladesh, um, before any white people arrived. And I saw white people in it, I would question that. Or something historically accurate based in the Amazonian jungle, where the native tribes were not white, and suddenly there's a white pe white person in the middle of it. I would question that. It works both ways. And I'm sure you all have opinions on it. And I don't mind having an opinion on it, because I'm really interested in history. I've written about historically accurate things, and I have done my utmost always to portray them accurately and write about things accurately and research them accurately so that when people read what it is that I've written, it's correct. Simple as that. Because why would you portray history as anything else? I mean, presumably they've done this because they want to make the money. And it's not a major subject, so the two things going for it are all the swearing and the cast. But it's not really the kind of film that you would expect to see in the cinema. I would, it's the sort of thing I would have expected to go straight to, you know, film on four or something like that. But it was still a good film and I'd still watch it again when it comes on the TV. But just be aware, if you're planning to go and see it, there are some glaring historical inaccuracies that you don't need to research to see. So that's my little thought for the day. I wasn't going to do this, but it bugged me all night and I thought, I need to say a few words on this, why not? Um, let me know what you think, if you've seen it and what you think, whether you think that historical accuracy is important when we're dramatising actual events that you can um, go back to the original sources and find out about. And how does that educate the general public when you provide misinformation, so to speak. Be interested in hear your thoughts. Speak to you later. Bye bye.